Hello, and welcome back to a very special birthday episode. No, no, not for Polaroid. Who even knows when their actual birthday is? They've died more times than I have cameras. I know, I know, the first step is admitting that you actually have a problem, <sighs> but I don't want to. <laughs> no, it was actually my girlfriend's birthday a few weeks ago, so we decided to have a little Vegas getaway. Mostly we just wanted a private pool, so. It really just happened to be in Sin City. So naturally, being good boyfriend that I am, I decided to bring a bunch of cameras along to document our time. At least that's what I think a good boyfriend does. <laughs> so what better present to get than just a bunch of Polaroid film, right? I know the optics looks a little bad, but really she likes shooting with the Polaroid 600. So I'm not making this up. You know, I didn't say I'd break up with her if she didn't like shooting film. No, that would be terrible. You can, you can even ask her. So today we're actually gonna look at three different cameras. Polaroid 600, a Pronto RF, and a Spectra. So to be honest, driving to Vegas this time wasn't bad because Corona is still a thing. No one's really going to Vegas and that's understandable. Who wants to play poker when everyone has a poker face mask? Face mask? poker face mask. But on our way, we stopped to eat in Baker. And on our way through that small town, my abandoned hotel meter was beeping like my carbon dioxide meter was last week. So we grabbed some keto-friendly Arby's, loaded up our cameras, and went to town. Let me just say, it was definitely hotter than a jalapeno in your eye. The spice level in the outside was just enormous. It was like the hottest recorded weekend ever. Hashtag global warming is a thing. Let's do something, guys. Come on. At this first stop, this is actually one of the first times I put color film through the Spectre camera. And I loved it. But more on that later. Lauren decided to grab the trusty 600 LMS for lime, minerals, and sediment. I don't know why they name cameras like that. Beats me. The first motel wasn't as abandoned, it was still for sale, but the second motel we went to definitely wasn't the case. Broken windows, broken glass, broken dreams. You know I like that stuff. So we crawled our way through and went to see some swimming pools. Way too hard for this shit. The one thing I gotta say about the heat is it unfortunately murdered our shots. Even five seconds in the sun gave a color wash all over the film. At first I thought maybe because it was expired, but no, it was just that hot outside. So after our stop in Baker, we ended up arriving in Vegas. And then we decided, let's take a drive down the strip. And much to our surprise, it was kind of dead. I mean, dead for Vegas. Instead of a packed escalator, there was maybe five people and a showgirl. It actually made us feel better if we decided to get dinner reservations somewhere on the strip. Also, I noticed they changed one of the names of the hotels. I think it fits. But once we got to the Airbnb and settled in, first thing we had to do was jump right into the pool.
That's exciting. Now, if you've ever used a Polaroid 600 camera, or any Polaroid camera for that matter, they're actually pretty easy to use. You load the film and you hit a button, it does the rest for you. You either have a flash or no flash, and then you have exposure compensation. That's all you got. So we just got out of the pool, and that's why my hair looks like this, but this Airbnb doesn't have a knife any knife that's sharp enough to cut anything other than butter. So good thing I brought my pocket knife. That's why you always bring a pocket knife with you. Yeah. The next day was Lauren's actual birthday and our main relaxing session. So after opening presents, and yes, I did get her more than just film, I'm not a monster. We found ourselves right back in that cool liquid oasis. Let me tell you what, the pool was amazing. To have a pool, all by yourself? No DJs going like, bitch, bitch, bitch. yo, what's up? Obviously, I've never been to a pool party. <sighs> so the camera that I was actually the most excited to use was the Pronto RF. Even though it's a pretty simple camera, it was the first time I'd be using it since I bought it. It's actually in great condition. It comes with a sweet bag and some flashes and an you know, owner's manual. Oh no, don't, don't bust it. And a note. What's this note say? Oh no. It's a love letter from 84. Came with some sweet cardboard. Go from the top. Sears special. Something happened. After a long day of drinking poolside and playing beer pong. Oh yeah, there was floating beer pong. I know, champion right here. That's what college bought me. Oh, oh you're just trying to show oh. off now. Ah. We did actually decide to go to the strip to have a nice birthday dinner. It was actually nice because the restaurant was outside and the tables were spread far apart. After the wonderful dinner and spectacular Bellagio water show, we actually ended up going to the Venetian. And at the end of the day, we're pretty happy we went in because just a mere 20 minutes later, Lauren pushed a few buttons on a Farmville and jackpot, baby. The whole machine was just like, blah, 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 things started happening and then just like coins everywhere. Ah, the rush of gambling. Lauren won 470 bucks. On Farmville. Farmville? Of all games? Hey, money's money. I'm not gonna discriminate. Maybe she'll buy me more film. Now the best thing about the Sun 600 is that it's really just easy to use. You open it up and you look through the thing and then you just take a photo. You have these buttons on the front. Red is flash, black is not flash. When it's green, just click it. Just just click and then you have exposure compensation on this front dial here and then you're done it focuses around four feet which isn't that close i mean but what do you expect the cool thing about the pronto rf is that it's a rangefinder. you could turn the little lens here and it does things you don't have to rely on the system itself to get focus it's something that i really enjoy about this camera to be honest i think i kind of wrote it off because it's this ugly poop color 
Come on, Sears. Really? Even though I made fun of the color, it's actually kind of cool that's a Sears special. They didn't make a ton of these, so I feel kind of lucky. This Pronto RF is actually not that much different than the 600. Other than the rangefinder, you have the button for the shutter, you have an exposure compensation dial right here, and it just takes a photo. Now, let me get the, the flash bulbs. Has a flash, so you could just put it right there and click away. It's also cool that you can focus up to three feet. But the annoying part is when you're focusing, it's kind of it's kind of difficult. Your hands in the, the viewfind way right here. So you like you, know, you kind of have to do this overreaching kind of thing, you know? It kind of does seem far. So you know you can make sure that you have crit folk. And this takes SX70 film, so it's not that much different from 600, other than the ISO range. I like it. I like it a lot. I'll probably actually be shooting a lot more of this camera. Well, yeah. By far, out of every Polaroid that is sitting behind me right now, the Spectra system is my favorite. For one, the format is amazing. Look how dope this is. Look how dope it is compared to this. It's bigger. Who doesn't want bigger? I just really like this format. But the next, you got this little, you know, you got it pops up and it's a little clamshell. On the back, you have a bunch of different options. Feet and meters, so you can be like, oh yeah, it's, you know, instead of five feet in front of me, it's however meters. I don't know, I'm not... European. It has a self timer back here, which is a cool function, but um, kind of messed it up. Didn't really grab focus properly. I'm actually gonna chalk that up to user error because it was the first time I ever did it. You have autofocus back here, AF or no AF, and you have exposure compensation back here. And the shutter button's just right back. Oh no, oh no, that tells you it's in focus. <laughs> this camera overall is, is, is my favorite. Personally, I like the wider format better. I think it has a very nice bright viewfinder here. The build quality is better. It just sucks that they discontinued this film because I would continue to shoot this. Maybe my only gripe about the Spectra system and particularly this camera, the strap on this on this left hand side. You just don't see that often and I get it ergonomics maybe, you know, but like kind of it's just kind of weird to me, you know? I'm a right-handed person, I hold it right, and now I'm just like, and then, you gotta keep this in the mouth of, put it in there, you know, just so dark, you know? That's the only thing. But honestly, I wish they kept making film for this, and I get it. There was problems with jamming ejection issues on these cameras, uh, not being able to eject the film properly. And sure, this kind of sounds like it's dying a slow death every time it ejects a photo. Other than that, it's a joy to use. It sucks that the only place I can get film for this is on eBay now, and it goes from 30 to 50 bucks. It's kind of a bummer that I only have like four more shots. Then that's it, I'm done, no more. And then what, it's gonna be a, a brick. I don't know, it was a joy to use. It was a joy to use, thank you for existing in the time frame that I have known you, my love. We have a little family back here, camera family. I should have popped these open for the entire episode. It looks so much better like that. When shooting any one of these films, one thing you really want to make sure you do is have your box ready to, to put your film in. Well, like these burnt photos. If I was just maybe a little bit quicker of getting it out of the dark shade and into the box, I might have saved some of them from going so nuclear. Maybe not because it was really hot. One of my favorite shots from the trip is actually not mine. It's one of Lauren's. On our way back, we ended up going to this abandoned eatery and she took this photo. I think the framing and composition and the fact that it's black and white is actually just Really cool. I'm very proud of it. After that, we ended up driving another hour to Lake Dolores, the abandoned water park where I visited once before a few years back. But instead of shooting any Polaroid, I decided to take my 4x5 out, get a few photos. Unfortunately, only one turned out, but I'll never pass up a chance to visit that water park. It's one of my favorite places.
At the end of the day, when looking back at all these photos, it doesn't actually matter which camera you pick out of all of these, except for Spectra. Spectra's the best. I cry every night because of its demise. But you can expect similar results from any one of the films, flash or not. They're basically all the same. Overall, I think if I would buy it into another Polaroid system, I'd probably get one of their new cameras. Other than the fact that they have a bunch of features that these old ones don't have, their film is cheaper. It's $16 versus a $20 pack. At the end of the day, that's a photo. And you see their new camera? Got the Mandalorian camera now. So they definitely know how to just get me and reel me in with just product placement. Hey, Caleb, look, there's another Star Wars thing. Do you need it? Yep. Thanks, George Lucas. No, no, really, thanks, George, for everything. I think taking Polaroid cameras was a great idea. They're fun and easy to use, and I didn't want to think on this mini vacation. Overall, this trip was exactly what we needed. Quick little getaway. Most importantly, I think we had a great time just hanging out by the pool, drinking margaritas, and taking Polaroids of each other. Well, join me next time, where I'll do some more ridiculous things and stuff, and then hopefully you'd like them, you know? Because who knows? You just don't know any day, any day anymore. Just no one knows anything. It's a piece of paper. Okay, bye.